What's up, everybody? Richard and Adam of True Shot here with the very first, first episode. episode of The Warped Report, <clears throat> where we're going to bring you all the rumors, gossip, hearsay around the Warped gossip. Tour, Metalcore, core scene. Yes. And uh, this is going to be really fun. Unfortunately, though, for the very first episode, I'm going to be honest with you, the news is kind of light. It's not a lot going on right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to touch on some news topics, go through some songs to discuss, uh, kind of like mini reviews, and also talk about some albums that recently came out. Well, in this case, one. It's not even an album. It's an EP. EP. And then talk about yeah. um, an album that is coming out. A couple of them. And then, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so we got, yeah, and then the, uh, 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 another EP that's going to be coming out. Ah. So right. um, let's just get into it. Are you ready? You want to get ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. You want to get ready? Though. I'm mm. Let's get ready. All right, let's get ready. Hold on. Some say love, it is a river. Our lead story <clears> tonight. <throat> Machine Gun Kelly. MGK. The, the, the former rapper extraordinaire was named the Billboard Top Rock Artist. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm looking at this, uh, this article here on Metal Injection. And needless to say... Uh, you know, the, 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 the metal uh, turbo nerds were not uh, pleased with this. Instead, what they want are a couple of best grandpas to win the Ooh, award. I'll take that. Yeah, there you go. Hold on, put that on. Yeah, Let's I like go. that. Perfect. Got it. I'm like um, a two, 2000s pop punk grandpa. Grandpa. I like that. Let's you're go you're like, it. hello, my fellow kids. Go. I'll you know? go skater boy, too. Oh, okay. Uh, there you Let's go. go. Uh, listen, man, I, I... Machine Gun Kelly... Like he is, uh, he is a rock star, man. I mean, his his record, his debut like pop punk record, "Tickets to My Downfall," charted at number one on the Billboard Top 200 his first week, and then it's also what did I, I mean? Put how in? do you go? What, what did he do before that? He was a rapper. I mean, straight up, just a rapper, just a rapper. And then he's uh, like, "I'm just gonna do pop punk," and he's like, "Yeah." Well, Ugh. he had that feud with Eminem there for a minute, and um, he uh, they did an exchange of diss tracks, and I honestly. Listen, I know I'm gonna probably get heat for this for the uh, the, the the amount of people that are uh, rap fans that are you know the crossover, but I honestly liked Machine Gun Kelly's diss track more than Eminem's. But needless to say, this album "Tickets to My Downfall" went platinum in Canada and it's gone silver in the UK. And uh, I'm just looking at Metal Injection here, and some of the people MGK beat ACDC for top rock artist. Uh, you know, like they're just like they're just all they're just all you know, for the lack of a better phrase. Uh, butt hurt about it and guy deserves it man i mean like when not he went number one on billboard for his debut record in this space so i mean i gotta say like oh boy here we go i i'm just gonna play devil's advocate here a little bit i mean do you really think that the like these buckets are accurate like at that level what do you mean like just like rock Ra like if well, they, I think they group, if you think of, they group, I mean, they group a lot of it in. Well, I think when you think of rock, I would think of like pop punk metal. I, I just think of rock. I okay, mean, okay. Pop. So it's it's looked at more of like a very fifty thousand foot level. Yeah, I think it's just like rock, rock. If it has a guitar, yeah. rock. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah. I got you. I so got you. that's why, and I think I think that he is a rock. I mean, dude. Because, I mean, look at some of these tweets. MGK is not a rock artist, LOL. Thank yeah. you, Eminem, for making M. I just you can't know. imagine, like, who are the people that are, like, that upset about it? Like, who cares, man? Like, like, like imagine, like, like me, I'm a Baltimore <laughs> Ravens fan. Somebody was just like, dude, Lamar Jackson, you know, their quarterback. Yep. Oh, he he sucks. And I'm, what I'm going to be like, no, he doesn't. No, no. Nah. Like, He's better like, than your quarterback. Uh, yeah, like, it's just weird, man. It's like, like. Why does this? People like to flex on stuff. I don't, I don't get. Know. I don't get why this matters to people. Like, I think he deserves it. Like, I think it's a really. And he said something cool too. Like when he got it, he said, uh, "I'm gonna find the quote here." But yeah, he said, "I released my first mixtape 15 years ago, and this is the first big stage I've ever been invited to accept an award on." I want to say something to the dreamers out there who are going to be tested by reality the way I was. Suspend logic and invite magic. If five years or ten years or twelve years had been too long, uh, waiting for this moment, then I wouldn't be having this moment. Show the universe that it can't take your dream from you. I really like that. Suspend logic and invite magic. That's a sick. Uh, that's a nice line right there. He's got to put that in one of his songs. But congrats to MGK. Hmm. Congrats to MGK. 
Interesting. Next up, I'm still laughing at these tweets, man. Yeah, it's just it's it's it, that, and it, it's like people wonder why like people like uh, you know more mainstream people aren't into like this sphere of music. It's because of these imbeciles. I mean, it's like just relax, dude. Like, who cares? Like, like this wouldn't even have been a like it would have been a news story. Would have been it would have it would have been like a little clip like oh, MGK won this award or whatever. But yeah, it turns into more because you got all but these. But you know like, what they do? They feed the machine. So so yeah. what they're trying to bring him down, but what they do is they make him bigger. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm sure that I'm sure that he loves it. It spreads. Exactly. Right. It right. spreads. I just think it's badass that this dude was uh, he was just a rapper, and then he goes into pop punk, and then just charts number one. That's fucking badass. And like that is a rock star if there ever was one. Yeah. But anyway, let's move on to some other rock stars here. here. Close this one. We got uh, Parkway Drive postponing their North American Viva La Underdogs tour, which was going I there's to. There's been a couple of bands who've postponed till 2022. Yeah, and I can understand why they are because they're from Australia. So, like, I can imagine getting to the states from Australia is not going to be done this year because I believe that this show is actually supposed to take place this summer. I know there was a tour at a, the venue near us, the the Worcester Palladium for outside. Oh, yep. Because this tour has Parkway Drive headlining with Hate Breed, Knocked Loose, and Fit for a King. So uh, that's a pretty loaded bill. Yeah. Um, I hope that even I'd with like the reschedule, yeah, I, I, I really hope with the, even with the reschedule that they're able to bring all these bands in for this show still because especially with Fit for a King's new album, I think that that would really do well on like a big stage oh, big like time. that. Knocked to loose in that environment would be really interesting. And hate breed, you know, I mean, the OGs, you know, they've been around forever. Ever. And um, they could definitely handle their own there. But hate to see it, but it is what it is, boys. You know what I mean? Next up, we got After the Burial. ATB. ATB A are in the studio with Will Putney. With all, Mr. Putney, huh? Yeah, I think we all know Will Putney at this point. Uh, as mm. the Metal is Metal Injection article points out, I did remember the Ghost of Side Body Count, but he's also worked with, you name it. I mean, he's a worked ton. with a ton with a, a, ton. a ton of bands. I know he just did the uh, most recent Not to Loose record, but yeah, that'll be at his studio graphic, Nature Audio. Uh, this is coming off their record, Evergreen. Um what do you, you think about Evergreen? So I haven't, I don't know if I've actually listened to that full record in its entirety, but from what I've heard, though, man, I mean, they just have their sphere of sound. I know they're they going to be going on tour with Black Dahlia Murder, too. Dude, these guys, they hustle all the time. I mean, they're like a, a Born of Osiris to me in terms from, like, every time I go to the Palladium for a metal show, who's on it? After the burial? <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um... Born of Osiris. Born of Osiris. Like, those two bands are on it, yeah. so... Um, these guys hustle. They're always out there. You know, I know they've gone through a lot, um, you know, over the years. But um, I, then one of their one of their members just recently passed away. Justin. Uh, uh, it wasn't recent. It was it was you know probably five maybe. Seven oh, was it okay? Years ago, I I can't. I can't remember exactly. It was it was a while ago. I know that they had a member that passed away yeah. though. Yeah, which I know he had some mental sucks. health struggles and uh, that didn't. Um, <clears throat> pan out the way everybody wanted it to, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they've been hustling regardless. So I'm excited. Um, I would say that you're probably a little bit more acclimated to them than I am. Yeah, um, I think. Um, again, I'm terrible with the album names, but the one they had before Evergreen with you know Laurie and Ghosts on it and stuff like that. A lot with the one with Lost in the Static. Lost in the Static. Like I love that album. I feel like Evergreen. They took a little bit different, you know, creative turn. Um, I didn't not like it. Yeah. It just wasn't my f favorite of the discography. Uh -huh. uh, I'm interested to see what they do next. Um, because, I mean, they're super technical. You can only do that stuff for so long. Yeah. And as, you know, history tends to repeat itself as bands get older from that techie, techie side, you know, yeah. they tend to soften up a bit. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how it goes. I know they're with Will on this one. I don't know who they've worked with in the past, but, uh, you know, Will, I think, will do a really nice job of hopefully bringing out whatever their sound something is. Different, yeah, right? maybe something different or just, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm just looking forward to it because after the burial, I mean, we almost named our band after uh, one of their albums without even knowing it, Rare Form. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Almost, we almost did that. Yeah, they, I mean, these guys just. I, I remember we saw them live with um, Azalee dying in a mirror. Oh, was it? That was at the Palladium. No, that was at um, 
uh, House of Blues. Oh, that was at House of Blues. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a sick show. Yeah, so man. I'm looking forward to what these guys have in store. And you know they're going to be on the road because they're always on the road. Right? Oh, yeah, of course. And then at the time of this recording, we're actually filming this on May 24th. Uh, Spirit Box has pr- premiered their newest track, Secret Garden, on Sirius XM. Uh, but I haven't heard it because we it wait so to do reaction videos. Yeah, typically, we will react. So that is out somewhere in the sphere. I don't know. I if do it'll... know it's on the uh, Metalcore Reddit right now. Um, yeah, but it's going to be out what in fifteen minutes? Our Eastern. I don't time, know right? when it's officially coming out. I know in our Twitch chat somebody was telling us that. But yeah, midnight I, I don't tonight. know. If, I don't know. I don't know if that's. I don't know. I, I don't know when it's officially going to come out. Well, but... you know what's interesting about being. At a table with a computer. We can look these things up. Look it up. Okay. Well, so, and we did get some news about their album, too. It's going to be titled Eternal Blue, um, and it's got some really cool track names, like Secret Garden is one of them, or We Live in a Strange World. But then, uh, so, yeah, um, on that record, Holy Roller will be on that album, as well as uh, Constance, which is the closer track, and then also Circle With Me, which is our most recent release other than Secret Garden. But, um, man, this is going to be one of the most highly anticipated records of recent yeah. memory. So have they said the date yet? Because I'm seeing dates on here on the, the Metalcore Reddit for September 17th. For the record to drop? For the, yeah, Spirit Box's debut album, Eternal Blue. I'm seeing track listings already. Yeah, there is some track um, listings. So, yeah, go through the track listings. We so have. Oh, we have. Hold on, let me just uh, get to this. Yeah, just read them uh, off. We have Sun Killer, Hurt You, Yellow Jacket, featuring Sam Carter of Architects. Uh, oh, we, I did not know. Yeah, that. that's what it says. <laughs> oh, sick. We're going on the Metalcore Reddit here. Uh, Post is updated as of yesterday. Um, Hurt You. Oh, I already said that. Yellow Jacket, that's the one featuring Sam Carter of Architects. The Summit, Secret Garden. Right. Is so this is a middle of the 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 way track. Yeah. Where we're getting. Yeah. Today, interesting. Or today, uh, Holy Roller is going to be on it. Um, I wonder if they're gonna release it as is or like a retract version. I would say probably as is. I mean, okay. I don't. I, I thought. I. I mean, it's a, it's a phenomenal track. Yeah. Uh, Eternal Blue. We live in a strange world. Uh, Halicon. Circle with me and Constance will be the closer. You say Halicon? What would what, what, you say? Halcyon? Hel- Halcyon. <laughs> Halicorn. Halico- <laughs> it's late, um, man. No, but, uh, yeah, so actually in, in reference to this track, um, Secret Garden, they put uh, Courtney actually put out a statement on Facebook and um, basically saying that is I'll, I'll just read it real quick. Um, I think this is the most scared I've been to put out a song because I realize as we continue to release music in singles format, listeners can start to assume what kind of band we are and are alarmed when we do not meet those assumptions. I want to continue to showcase the fluidity that is inherent in heavy music. And even though this is just one part of a full body of work that may not sound exactly like this song, it is a song that we love and are obsessed with. I celebrate variation. Secret Garden is exciting to me for this reason. I'm scared but excited, but I'm about to hit the big drop on a roller coaster, and I'm fully embracing that. So it sounds like this is going to be... Very different track. Which is cool because, I mean, they always do a bunch of different stuff, which I always applaud, and I think that's really, really cool. So I am looking forward to that. And, and Mike, if you're watching this, hi, Mike. What's up, Mike? Hi, Michael. Um, sweet. But now let's discuss some new music. Let's du- let, let's dive in. Slaughter to Prevail. STP. Baba Yoga. Dark, flesh we ate. Love through the pain. Nothing but food. <laughs> It, which that'll be up on our channel, shameless plug. But yeah, so Slaughter to Prevail, Baba Yaga. What did, what did you think of this track overall, man? Um, I will have to say I definitely felt differently hearing it in the car um, passively and just enjoying the vocalist yeah. that is Alex the Terrible versus what we saw in the video, which was, um, you know, Alex fighting bears, um, really sick band playthrough, yeah. uh, Russian roulette with... Uh, Three in the chamber. I mean, and they all got their heads blown. Yeah. All so it was heavy. I mean, it was just, dude. Those guys just 
This hit a slam. Yeah, it really reminded me of like early Slipknot. Um, yeah, just, like, he had with those cleans that, in there too, right? Yeah. The clean, like spoken words it, with some ambience behind it. Yeah, it was like if early Slipknot was a deathcore band. Right. Like, and I, I really enjoyed that song a lot. Super yeah, heavy. I liked it too. I love like the little clean sections, but really awesome track. Uh, profile. Be, oh. Let's go back. Okay. Okay. Do we, are they going to be releasing anything other than singles? Cause they yes, they singles. are going to be releasing a record, uh, titled Costalum. And I'm going to get to the release date on that. Solder to prevail. Um, I'm looking forward to their, to this record. Uh, of course, cause it's, I mean, solder to prevail. They just go heavy. But yeah, man, uh, they got some some vinyl variants, really cool. Alex, uh, terrible. Um, <laughs> the the album art is just perfect. It's just him with his arms folded, made in Russia. But yeah, we have a track listing here. Uh, okay, so we have Bone Breaker, Demolisher, Baba Yaga, Made in Russia, Agony, Zavali, Ebalo, Your Only. I Killed a Man, Bratva, Ouroboros, Head on a Plate, and Father. So, wow. Yeah. So, that's uh, how many tracks is that? That's three, six, nine, 12 tracks. So, that'll be something to uh, look for. And I'm looking forward to that. These guys are insane, man. Yeah. Now, I, wa- I really wanted to discuss these guys because this has been a band, a band with only one track that I've been very just compelled to listen to as of late and that's profiler who recently signed to sharp tone Records. reaction to it because it was the you know it's sharp tone i respect their uh musical opinion and uh you know, I I saw this was a brand new band. I was like, okay, this has got to be good if they're signing a brand new band with their very first single. Of course, I'm sure they have you know an album planned to roll out, but yeah, I mean, they probably said, hey, they're yeah, shopping it around, right? right? Exactly. They're probably shopping it around. Yep, right. And so, um, and I I loved it, man. It really reminded me of Chevelle. Uh, My Chemical Romance and Thornhill put together. Just super, super good if you really like, you know, like those. It was very like, if I had to like divvy up the parts, it was like the heavy instrumental reminded me of yep. Thornhill. Um, the Cleans. The, the Cleans reminded me of like My Chemical Romance. Yeah, but it was ambient in like a Thornhill like yeah, yeah. space. Right, and like the soft instrumentals really reminded me of like a Chevelle. Like, yeah, you, you're. I'm not very familiar with Chevelle, um, but that's just a cool band name, Chevelle. Yeah, that sounds like a, like a really nice car, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Is it? Well, I think there are Chevelle. Is Chevelle was? Yeah, a I was gonna say that is a car, isn't it? Chevelle. Cadillac Chevelle. Cadillac Chevelle. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. Chevelle. I'm, I'm conv- Chevelle the brand name. I'm convinced that Chevelle is. I believe it was an American Chevelle car. I'm gonna pull it up here. Yeah, it's yeah. uh. Ford? Let's see here. It's a Chevrolet. Chevy Sh- Chevrolet Chevelle. Chevelle. That's kind of a lot of CHs. A Chevy Chevelle. Yeah, I guess that's why I didn't go to Chevy. Interesting. I guess it was uh, in production from till till 1977. Okay. Well, the more you know. Well, that was uh, very much in the medical s- metal core. Absolutely, sphere, wasn't it? It was. That's why but, I did uh, the report. Yeah, I, I mean, I gave that song like a nine out of ten. I really yeah, liked it. Yeah, I mean, you did share it with uh, both Derek and I. Yeah. Um, I wasn't digging the, the the beginning of it, and then once it hit the cleans and that ambience and stuff, it really picked up for me. Yeah, so I liked it after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Took me a minute to get into it, but yeah, yeah. But it was a really cool song, and I'm looking forward to more from those guys over on Sharp Tone Records. Now. Let's this discuss my, this. This is my big topic. Go ahead. Introduce the topic. The Devil Wears Prada comes back. Well, they haven't been gone, but I'm saying has returned with Zombie 2. So the Zombie 2 came out. They did a live stream as well, right? Yeah, they did. Yep. Um, and then it came out. You did a full album reaction. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, I um, tell us about it. I I've listened it was, to it too. 
So, I thought it was pretty good. I, so the tracks were, I believe, in order. I believe it was Nightfall, Forlorn, Termination, yep. Nora, Contagion. Contagion, yep. Yep. I liked Nightfall. I liked Forlorn. I thought Contagion was pretty cool, but Nora and Termination were like, they were okay, but not my thing. So quick backstory, like Devil Wears Prada has always been a band that I've had a lot of trouble kind of getting okay. into. I don't know why. Um, I've seen them live numerous times, and I just there's something about them that I just there's just something missing for me. But Nightfall was cool. Um, Forlorn was the only music video on the EP, which I thought was kind of I was a little bit let down. They by didn't that. do it for Termination, did they? No, they, they were all visualized. Yeah, the visualizers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was a little let down because I especially think with this type of probably a concept EP, if it was, I don't know if it actually was. I don't know. I, I, I felt like it wasn't as fluid as the first one. Yeah, I just I just really wish like uh, there was a, like a, a, a visual story arc to kind of go with it because for Lauren, that music video was sick. Like, although, I mean, let's be honest, though, the, the acting in it, it's like, lady, the guy's turned into a zombie. Just run away. I mean, like, the guy's a zombie. Like, what do you... <laughs> No, Johnny, don't, don't. It's like, get the hell out of there. That's what I said it's in the reaction dramatic, video. Dramatic, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess. But it's like so like, like I, I know that like if I was in a situation where if you were laying on the floor and you were turned into a zombie, I'd be like, I'm getting the hell out of here. You'd be getting, dude, I'd be stabbing you with that, that screwdriver that's off camera right here. I'd be like, yo, dude, you're dead? Yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm grabbing or, my guitar <laughs> and I'm leaving. That's it. Yeah, exactly. So, but no, I thought it was okay. I gave it like an eight out of ten. I think, I think that I, I think that uh, Nightfall, Forlorn, and Contagion are the tracks that I would listen to again with Nightfall leading the way, and Nora and Termination. I would uh, pass on. I I have been obsessed with Termination since they released it. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I don't I don't know why. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I don't know. I just do. And I, I, I've been listening to it multiple times a day since it came out. Um, I liked contagion, um, with the singing. Um, yeah. That, that I thought was really good. Um, not that they've never done singing obviously, but right, right, I, right. I just, the way they did it, um, was different. So that caught me off. You know, if I had to compare the two, I, I just think they're two different eras of the devil wears Prada. And I just feel like the first one was so seamless for me that I can't almost compare it. I I, I have to look at them separately. Yeah. Um. If I had to say which one would I listen to, if you had to, you know make me choose, it would be the original. Yep. Yeah. Um. Just because I could listen to that front to back over and over and over. Um. And this one I haven't got there yet, and so I, I'm probably five listens in all the way through. Um. It's grown on me, and it's it's like the Era album. So we, you know, originally when the 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 recent Era record came out, I mean, I was like, oh man, this is like a seven out of ten for me. And mm. then the I, I probably got through like a good f- five or six listens, and I I'm I'm up at nine now. You know, I, I yeah. just I like it a lot more. So this might be something that needs to grow on me. You know? Fair, fair, yeah. All right, well, next, uh, let's talk about some albums that are, well, an album that is going to be coming out on the 28th of May. That's Our Hollow, Our Home, Burn in the Flood. This was a band that you introduced to me, actually, probably, Mm. I don't know how long ago that was. A year and a half ago? Yeah, probably about at that point. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. So, so far off of this record, we've had Burn in the Flood, Remember Me featuring Rio Kinoshita, Better Days, and Seven Years Shine a Light on Me, which is the closer. So this is 11 tracks. There's two other features on this record. We have Ollie Duncanson, who I'm not even sure. Like I'm going to look him up real quick because Ollie Duncanson. I'm not sure what band uh, he is. Oh, The City is Ours, I believe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, The City is Ours, and the, the, he's the new vocalist of that band, actually. So that's a nice, um, mm. nice yeah. Loki. Yeah, and then Loki. Loki. Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. Because I think I said Loki. People are like, it's not Loki, it's Loki. And I'm like, oh, good. So it's Loki of Alpha Wolf. Yeah. So hopefully that's going to be a heavy boy, you know? So uh, for me, man, I... uh, Oh, then Overcast was another track that came out as well. Uh, So Overcast was actually my favorite off of this record so far with... um, 
Burn in the Flood, number two. And then I would say probably Remember Me at number three. And then I don't know. The other two are kind of, the other two are okay, but not really my thing. But so five singles so far. Um, yeah, five out of to, eleven. Five out of eleven leading up to the album. Yeah. What are you uh, What are you hoping for? Because I know that this is kind of like you, you love know, this I'm, band. Yeah, I mean, I I I found them. Oh God, quite a while ago. Uh, I mean, they've been around for some time, but um, yeah. like maybe back in 2018, um, I found Heartsick and um, I fell in love with them. Uh, just because they're it's it's very like it's got that really growly vocal with a nice soaring you know choruses so um and, and they complement each other well you know the the vocals um and then it just hits so hard you know yeah they I, they have a knack of making everything just sound so yeah big. they yeah they they have their sound and they do it well very very well very very well yeah um you know I I'm just I really like the the remember me style songs, right? The ones yeah. that come out, you know, fast slamming, you know, you get your heavy, heavy, and then it breaks out and then you get your heavy, heavy, and then it breaks out a little yeah. bit. Um, I mean, I like that recipe personally. I'm, I'm hoping they do that, you know, with a different flair, you know, mm. um, Open. I know, I know when we talking to, uh, um, Toby about, um, which is the one that I, I wasn't big on. He's like, Oh, we lost Adam on that one. There was one that I wasn't. Uh, it was it was a little poppy for me. Oh, was that uh, better days? Better days. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, yeah, it was better days. Can you tell I didn't go back yeah. and listen to it? <laughs> I will on the album though. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I I, I like them to keep it that heavy aggression with. Uh, well, hopefully that Locky track is just that. Yeah, because they can do it. All, yeah, you know what I mean, because Connor, their vocalist, he's oh god, he's got he's that really awesome the, bark, the bark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, I, I just love it, man. Yeah, he's, he's and so you look good. at him like you know they do Twitch and stuff like that, and you look at him, he doesn't look like. I mean, he's not like this giant guy, you know what oh. I mean? He's just like a regular dude, regular dude, and he's got this bark, dude. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the to, to what these guys uh, have coming out. They're kind of like an if I were you to me. You know what I mean? It, yeah. Except they they I think they tour more than than if. Oh I were yeah, you. yeah. Well, uh, it's obviously. pretty easy to tour more than if I were you. If yeah. You, if they, you literally go on a weekender, I mean, you've toured true. more than if I. <laughs> that is true. That's true. <laughs> Got to get Randy out of the studio. I know. What the um, hell, man? But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that these guys, you know, kind of you know, kind of hit that level for me where they're just like. They have such a good mix, so I, I I want them to see them grow, but not too much where it's just like they lose what, what I made, fell in love right. with. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So um, selfish fan, but yeah, hey, I, we I all am, are. But I'll support them regardless because they're awesome. They're nice dudes. Yeah, that too. Also coming out on May twenty eighth is the next. Yeah, <laughs> is the next, the next ominum. ominum. Uh, of mice EP. and men. Yeah, this is their second EP. Um, this is. Uh, Titled Bloom, I believe. Is it Bloom? Uh, it is Bloom. Yeah, um, okay. It is Bloom. Um, now, we did a reaction to... To Bloom. Bloom. Yeah, because they had another EP out here that I'm looking at called Timeless, which had Timeless, Obsolete, and Anchor. And then Bloom um, is going to be coming out, which is cool. I, I like that they did two EPs. I think that's a really cool way to mm. release the music. And... Um, yeah, so there's a quote here. I'll read it real quick. So it says, uh, Bloom is a song about grieving the death of a family member, says of my cement singer and bassist Aaron Pauly. It's about understanding through that loss that grief is not only love in its most visceral and wildest form, but that it's also the ultimate price we pay to experience such love. To know profound grief is to have known profound love, Nothing and no one lasts forever. Love isn't a bouquet of plastic flowers. It's watching the petals fall. Dude, that's, that's heavy. A, that's deep. That is heavy. That is deep. Yeah, man. So I'm looking forward to uh, to this next EP. I like that they I like that they did two EPs. I, I don't know why, but I just think that's really cool because I think that really speaks to um like the modern way that people kind of listen to music as like assume, yeah. Yeah, like do a couple EPs, and then well, I guarantee. Uh, well, I shouldn't say I guarantee, but I would be willing to bet that they're going to be doing a couple EPs, and they'll probably do like a super, like a, like the two EPs will then tie into an album, 
So it'll be like maybe like a, a tw- you heard it here first, a ten or eleven track album. I, I could very well see that, like just combining like three EPs together. Yeah, to then, make the to make it. Yeah, which would be hmm. really really cool. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So and uh, and then another news. Uh, this band True Shot was in the studio in California, yeah, where weren't we? Wait, Wait who we, are they? Yeah, who's who are they? We weren't there. Uh, who, uh, who who are they? But yeah, they were in the studio at Ashtone Audio tracking some music. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that was... Um, that band sucks. No, they don't. They they slap, dude. Hard. Dude, I don't know, man. Listen to that one song, Break the Cycle. It sucks. Oh, that was from their <laughs> early days before they became... Butt rock. Butt rock. <laughs> But yeah, guys. Now we we were in the studio, uh, and um, we're gonna be having some more music come out, and we're gonna continue to be doing. Hopefully, next week's podcast is a little bit more news. But yeah, by this yeah, point definitely. too, we'll have um, the new of Mice and Men EP out, uh, the new Our Hollow Our Home album. So yep. we'll have to uh, discuss that. In yeah, all. we usually discuss reactions. We didn't have anything that was. Um Really from this... Smashing. Yeah. Not from this space. Yeah. Like, I guess, uh, like, what was probably one song from our reaction tonight that you were like, yeah, like, that was sick. Like, I think for me, oh, man, like, I honestly don't know. Like... Um, let me look at the list here. I'm gonna go back. I, I know would we say- vibed out to Doom. You know, we did yeah, do Doom, yeah, but that yeah. was that was more of a fun. Oh, track. Tony Danza tap dance extravaganza. <sighs> that would be my number one. Alpha yeah. and the Omega. Yeah. So if you're gonna take that one, uh, that'll be like yours. Mine was uh, World Divided in their track Disparate. And okay. um, also, I do want to throw one also real quickly too that I saw Aaron Matz of 1056. You know, out, yep. out of line music. You know, yep. Let's, we'll get that plug in there. That is true. Their their first record is officially complete, and. Um, Dude, those guys are taking over the world. I I'm telling you right literally now. Literally cannot wait. Like, when are they? I can't tell. I can't say. Lips are sealed. Lips are sealed. We can't say nothing. Can't say anything. We can't say. We can't. We can't. Uh, can't. We can't be ruffling any feathers. Our very first podcast no. here on Out of Line. No. But just know we have the scoop, and we will not share it with you. Just, we are journalists, but. I mean, listen. This isn't. Uh, this isn't uh, Watergate. Okay, so just relax. But. Uh, any closing thoughts or words of wisdom, Grandpa, before we head out of here? No, I will not be wearing this hat every time. Uh, I shall embrace the Grandpa for this evening. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, uh, to to new music coming out and discussing more. Hopefully we get some more. Meat uh, on the bone. Meat on the bone for next week. And yeah. we definitely will be back for more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, everybody, thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of The Warped Report with Richard and Adam of the band that one true shot one. And thank if you, you have if anything they want us to take a look yeah, at yeah if you guys if there's anything that you would like Reach for us out. to check out um you know uh, you, you can definitely hit us up on all of our social media and if you know just for our plugs which i guess we'll plug them right uh, Why not? we're at true shot band on instagram twitter and you can look that up on facebook just true shot you'll find us we also have a patreon patreon.com slash true shot official and also a Twitch where we stream every Monday and Saturday. Uh, Twitch.tv slash TrueShotOfficial. Until the next podcast, everybody. Peace. Peace.